Mr. Sandu, the dedicated freight corridor is uh, one of the key elements initiated by the government, basically to bring down the overall cost of the logistics sector, down from a presently estimated level of anything between 12 and 14 percent of the GDP uh, to a single digit figure, ideally. And it also complements the recent many policy initiatives that have come out, the National Logistics Plan, the Kati Shakti Plan, and, and, and a number of other initiatives from uh, the government. The fast adoption of the dedicated freight corridor will lead to more sustainable freight transportation. It'll reduce pilferage, and we hope to ensure fewer mishaps and increase efficiencies. I think that's a key word. What um, do you consider uh, are some of the factors that can expedite the shift of cargo transportation from road to rail, which is the hope of, of the government as well as uh, uh, private players? The dedicated freight corridor is an excellent, modern, efficient asset that's been created. It's a fixed asset. Mm -hmm. It can by itself bring a certain amount of efficiencies onto the transport system. But it needs two important add-ons for the full advantages to be put in place. The first advantage is that the dedicated freight corridor is pretty much a, a tube, but it yeah. needs more openings. So it needs more access to the industrial areas nearby, to the new industrial corridors that, uh, for example, Uttar Ut Pradesh, which is the major part of the Eastern Corridor, all those new factories are coming up. So it needs access to them. So it's not just that freight comes in at one end of the tube and is quickly pushed to the other end of the tube. As I said, that advantage is already existing. But to take the full advantage of the large amount of capital investment that has been done, I think this tube needs openings and access to the trade and industries in the And when that access happens, that's one level of great improvement that I see. The second part is the fact that uh, currently uh, there are no track access charges based. Mm. Dedicated freight corporation is a corporation and therefore it is managing a fixed asset and there are certain costs that it has to recover as a regulated asset base. So the sooner a uh, regulator who can manage these regulated assets comes up with a uh, advertised track access charge the DFC will really take off because then we can see a lot of private investment that comes in into the rolling stock itself, into the running of trains itself. Additional level of efficiency is more common. So to recap what I just said, yes, there's a certain amount of efficiency. The tube by its modern and efficient nature is bringing in, but the real advantage will come in when the tube has more openings. You have more access to the nearby economic activity. And secondly, if you advertise track access charges and everybody knows what is my per kilometer cost of access, and then private operators will start coming with their own wagons and, and their own solutions to take advantage of this pipeline. So I think if we build these two additional layers onto the DFC and mm -hmm. the work which we do it, that will be the that will be the real game changer. And that will also infuse investment into intermodality, into multimodal connectivity, because I believe that is also one of the elements that is a challenge today: the easy change of cargo from one mode of transport, truck to another mode of transport rail. Yeah, so I think the fact of the matter is that the rail is waking up to the reality now that it is not a railway operator. It's actually a transport and logistics operator. Yeah. And therefore, end-to-end -end services are to be brought in. But one way of looking at it is in the first phase, let's see if the private sector can bring in its own efficiencies. Yeah. So if the private sector operator comes in and there's an advertised charge, then I will pick up the consignment from the producer's premises. And I will be doing the first mile connectivity or the first 10 kilometers or 15 kilometers that go and then get onto the DFC and then you know, go quickly across and then provide the last mile at the other end also. So that's where multimodalism yeah. starts coming in. And the other advantage is, of course, of the Indian waterways wherever we can get connectivity. Yeah. But I think the key to the lock lies in a regulator who publishes the charges of use. And then I think uh, multimodality will be very different. So I guess the, the key is also, you, you keep on saying that this is an asset, it's been uh, capital intensive, so in all normal uh, logic, we would want to sweat the asset. Yeah. And maybe you mentioned earlier a bit about a regular and tariff structure. Is there a way that we can consider a different tariff structure? I know it's a sensitive issue because currently uh, freight obviously contributes a lot to uh, passenger uh, traffic as well. But is there a way to look at a different mechanism of pricing and keeping Indian rail revenue neutral? So that means bringing the efficiencies, sweating the asset, letting private logistics service operators really uh, being able to put attractive price packages together to, uh, to users, uh, to cargo owners. So two aspects of a regulator are very well established. And India has 
very robust experience with regulators. Uh, for example, look at airport regulation in India, yeah. or look at telecom regulation in India. And what do you see? An exploding market and some of the lowest prices in telecom and in the airline. I think what a regulator is very clearly tasked to do is to make sure that the industry uh, thrives forward and at the same time it thrives forward in a manner that looks after customer interests. Yeah. There cannot be a better formulation than that. I think there's no fear of loss of revenue to the Indian Railways, uh, which is the 100% owner of the DFC. I think the regulator will ensure that there are revenues available to the DFC to make sure that the asset is fit and fine and maintained well. And there's delta available, in fact, to the Indian Railways to, to earn more, actually. I don't see any fear in that. I think it's, it's a no-brainer and a win-win for everybody, both for the railways, DFC, and the industry. Yeah, very interesting. I think uh, yeah, we put some of these messages across, uh, then I think we, we have a, an actual realistic chance of achieving what we all want is a lower cost of logistics and higher efficiencies and bringing India into a, a bigger part of the global, uh, global value chain. No, you're not on. Absolutely right. Thank you very much, Mr. Sandu. It's a pleasure, Paul. I always pleasure to speak to you. Thank you.